Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our pre-show. Glad that you could join us for worship today. We're going to get started in just a few minutes, so I invite you to relax and uh, get ready. We're going to talk a little bit about some favorite Christmas memories. I think Carolyn's got one from the, the home life. I'm going to share one from the church. Uh, yeah, you want to share your memory, Carolyn? I would love to. When we were, tr- you know, when we were brainstorming all the memories that we have over Christmas, one came to mind as a new mom. Uh, Our daughter, Annabelle, was six months old at the time. She's 10 now. And, uh, you know, my my husband at the time and I hadn't really talked about uh, sort of the rules about gift giving with with Christmas. And so uh, both of us ended up shopping for Annabelle, uh, unbeknownst to me. And when I realized just how many gifts were under the tree for our six-month-old daughter, who got very quickly bored of opening the many many gifts that were under the the tree, I quickly realized we should probably discuss what the plan is for the next year. (laughs) That's great. They're probably hoping you'll do that again. Oh, no, absolutely. Yes. You know, and we were talking uh, before we started here that sometimes Christmas can be a tough time for people. So we recognize that as well. That may be case for you. We're praying for you today and through this season for sure. A memory that I have around the church uh, a number of years ago at our children's service, young family service, somebody, a little one, pulled the fire alarm. And so uh, <laughs> the truck came, the fire truck came from station 201, and uh, I'm the chaplain for the fire department. So I, I knew the guys that came yeah. that, that night, and uh, they dealt with stuff. And then they pulled me aside and said, Jamie, you didn't need to get a kid to pull the fire alarm <laughs> to get us here on Christmas <laughs> Eve. But they were here serving and That's doing their thing. Funny. So you might have your memories. Toss them in the chat, or maybe you want to share some of your favorite Christmas memories around the dinner table later on tonight with your family. Mm -hmm. We're just glad you're with us today. We're going to start worship in just a a moment. Sit back, relax, and can't wait to be with you. Hi, thanks for worshiping with us. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at MBUC Kids. You can also receive a newsletter with our pre-recorded children's service in your email. We have two small groups on Sundays for grades one and two and for grades two and up. We also have a preschool program running Fridays at 11 a.m. See you there.
Christmas and the UC, and welcome to church. From our family to yours, Merry Christmas and the UC. Hi, everyone. We just wanted to take a moment and uh, share with you the third fruit of the Spirit, which is peace, and how we as a couple and family try to cultivate more of it in our lives at this time of year. Um, I think peace is essential for our overall health and, and well-being, and it's important to try and really be intentional about celebrating peace. Absolutely. We we really try to to enjoy the holiday season and, and bring peace into our lives with preparation. You know, there's so much going on and, and so many things you got to do and worry about. If you prepare in advance, you know, do your baking, your decorating, whatever you do around the holiday season that takes up a lot of your time. If you start to work on it and get it done, it's going to give you a lot more time to do the things that bring that peace, connecting with God, family. Even getting outside and connecting with nature, nothing like some snow to put you in a good frame of mind. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah. Skiing's nice. We like to ski, although it's been a while since we've <laughs> getting too old done that. that. <laughs> but we've, uh, yeah, that's how we uh, just, especially when you get on that mountain and it's the, you're the first run down in the morning. Love that. Um, mm. Especially, you know, in this climate, it's so easy to worry about things um, that we have no control over anyway. So why not take some time and just enjoy, be in the moment, um, be grateful for what we do have and uh, be with family. Hopefully we can be with family and friends uh, this Christmas, but Well, you know one what? way or another either hopefully in person, but if not virtually, for sure, because we're yeah. all getting much better at that. So there are ways to get things done, even when things are a little bit different. But uh, there are things that, that we can do, that we can all do no matter what the situation, and that's get closer to God with scripture, with prayer. So many different ways we can we can connect with God and, and just bring that inner peace that just puts a calm over everything, just like a blanket of snow. So, and with that, um, I'd like to share some scripture with you. And um, uh, one of the more uh, common ones that uh, we share, and, and it is directly related to peace, is uh, Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everyone. Good morning and welcome, everyone. My name is Carolyn Arthur, and you may know my guest, Jamie Holtum. Jamie, I'm so excited because this is the first time that we've been online hosts together, so Thanks for inviting me today. Are you kidding? Thanks for inviting <laughs> me. I'm glad I get to do this with you. Yeah. And so, you know, while we're just getting ready to worship together, we ask that you like and share on Facebook and Instagram. And Jamie, I have something to tell you about YouTube that I just learned. May I share? Absolutely. So if you go ahead and subscribe on our YouTube channel, NBUC Church, and highlight the little bell, you'll get automatic notifications to your phone when something new has dropped. And that way you don't ever have to search for us again. So exciting about wow, that. Wow, I did not know that. <laughs> I think I need to do that. You should absolutely do that, Jamie. <laughs> and then you know when our podcast is is, uh, is going to be playing. So yeah, welcome everyone. And uh, you may be new or maybe you're looking how to connect further. And so if you want to go to our website, mbuc.ca, you will find that there. We get those cards in every week online. It really helps us connect people. We want to help people grow in Christ. And we're glad you're here to do that with us uh, today. We're going to continue our series. This is the second week of our Good News series. This is a series taking us into Christmas. We call it our Advent series. Advent really means coming. It's the coming of Jesus. And so we're preparing for this arrival of God coming to earth 
to planet Earth, to show love, to share love, to help us live into that as well. All that's part of the good news of this Christmas season. Allie McGregor is going to be talking about peace and how God can and does bring peace in the midst of this Christmas season as our message time today. Mm -hmm. And now we invite you to worship with us with our new Christmas song for the season, Here Comes Heaven. And however singing looks for you, whether you're standing with your arms open or sitting on the couch, cuddling with your loved ones. Uh, you know, Jamie, when we talk about bringing peace back to earth from heaven, um, I have to say, because Christmas can be a bit tough mm -hmm. for, for some people, and I know I personally have found it challenging in the past. And so, you know, I think for me, this song is particularly meaningful about really resting on the idea mm. of bringing peace to earth. Mm. Let's worship a God of peace. Children weep no more Hope is on the horizon Weary world behold Your promised Messiah Angels let your
Thanks so much. Love, love that song. Love that line, hope is on the horizon. And isn't that what Advent's about? It's about waiting for this hope that's coming with the arrival of Jesus. And speaking of hope, we, we are looking for hope as we remember today. Today is the National Day of Remembrance around violence against women. And I want to read the following statement as we remember what happened 31 years ago in Montreal. Today we remember the 14 women who were violently cut short, whose lives were violently cut short due to the tragic mass shooting at L'Ecole Polytechnique in Montreal on December 6, 1989. On this day, we honor all those who have experienced gender-based violence and want to take a stand as followers of Jesus, as people who fight for justice and peace amongst all people, so that a tragedy like this never happens again. Friends, we just want to stop and have a moment of silence and to pray for the memories of this, but also for this to be stopped today for justice, for the end of violence against women. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we, we remember this tragedy that took place so long ago, and we recognize today just how unjust it is, it was. And so as we pray today, we ask for your peace to come in the midst, for the families who will continue to remember without question that your peace would surround them today. For those who struggle even now around violence against women, that you would be with them, that you would lead them out of those places into a place of safety, and that we would continue to build, build a culture, a life where all people can live safe and healthy lives. And we ask for your leading of us by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, during the month of December, we're looking to find ways for us to connect even further together. And so we're having more live streamed events. And ladies and gentlemen, get your phone out and mark the alarm for 6.55 p.m. this evening because we have our first live event, Baking with Jamie Holtum. Oh no. Jamie, <laughs> how are you feeling about this? Uh, very, very nervous, to be honest. <laughs> I'm pretty certain that Nana Holtum is going to be holding your hand virtually throughout the whole thing, because if you've ever tried her cookies, uh, you know, you do come from good genes. So um, I, 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 I have faith and hope that uh, it's going to be a fabulous outcome tonight. Well, thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So we uh, we got some live events happening over December. We we've heard uh, from from others, and and we all feel this. We want it. We want to be together in this way, and and so we're looking forward to Sunday Night Live. Watch for some other events coming up over the month as well. It's going to be a, a great month as we move towards Christmas. We, one of those live events is, is the Light of Remembrance. That'll, that'll be happening on Wednesday, December the 16th. And uh, we are grateful that we can bring people together to remember loved ones who have been lost over the years or even recently and find hope, find God's light in the mm -hmm. midst of that. And uh, you can catch the Zoom link. It'll be on our website. Um, we'll be emailing it out. It'll be on our social medias as well. We, on that night, just uh, we'd love to have, for you to have a candle handy and a picture of your loved one. And we're gonna we're gonna celebrate and remember together the light of remembrance. Also, today is the last day to bring in um, your gifts for caring and sharing. From one to three, you can drop those by the church. And uh, please be praying for the team that's leading that huge initiative, sharing Jesus' love through caring and sharing at Christmas time. Now we're gonna continue to worship. Please join us as we sing. Go tell it on the mountain. Trump. 
As we move into this time of giving, friends, this is a time of year where we really consider what moves us. And when we think about the biblical principles of being a generous giver, I know personally I've experienced uh, the Holy Spirit often uh, when it comes to giving around Christmas. And I think sometimes it helps to have a purpose or something to really anchor ourselves. And for me, it's been the caring and sharing, Jamie. Um, you know, I've talked about how Debbie and her team are our angels mm -hmm. and how they're uh, really involved with um, supporting our local community. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, for me, it gives me peace knowing that my contribution is absolutely making a difference. And to know that a family will be able to put uh, Christmas dinner on their table because of what we're able to do and have gifts under the tree because of our generous support, mm -hmm. it, uh, it's, it, it's yeah. moving like we can't even speak. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It's awesome to be part of it. And we appreciate your support around caring and sharing and giving to the ministry and mission of NBUC. If you want to give today there, you can go to nbuc.ca and you'll find a way to give that's very easy. And uh, there's never any pressure with these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, it really is meant to be a peaceful, joyful decision. And I know Kitcher and I have, have really enjoyed growing and giving over the years. And just like you say, Carolyn, just really to be able to see what God has blessed us with um, be offered in a way that, that does bless others and sees God's work continue. It's a great thing to be a part of. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Won't you pray with us? Mm -hmm. Loving God, thank you for the continual abundance and open hearts that we see with our church community and with our friends in Brampton and beyond. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to help us discover and find new ways to give of our finances, our time, our, our energy, and particularly during this Christmas season in 2020, we, we just thank you for the joy and the peace and all that you're able to provide. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Amen. And uh, now as we uh, lead into Ali McGregor's message, good news message on God's peace, um, as we lead into that, we'll see the Advent candle of peace lit by the Martin family. And uh, if you're on Facebook especially, but probably all social media, because they do such a great job, Jamie and Brian, of, of sharing videos of Derek. What a beautiful young boy who's growing in his faith. So the Martin family light the peace candle for us today. And we invite you also to light your Advent candle of peace at home as well as this is taking place. As part of our bedtime routine, Derek and I will cuddle and read stories. This is my favorite part of the day and I look forward to it. Taking the time to relax and get lost in a good book helps me find peace in an otherwise busy day. Can I help light the candle? 
Okay, how many light it? Hold. Oh, one sec. Can you say it? Would, what, no, say peace candle. Peace candle. Yay. <laughs> Good morning. The theme for today's message is peace. And I think most of us can agree that even in a normal year, peace around the holidays sounds a bit like an oxymoron. It's a very busy time of year. We're normally all running here, there, and everywhere, getting presents, um, making sure that we're giving to people who are in need, visiting people, hosting parties. It's just a very chaotic season. But this year has definitely been different. And for me personally, I think it's even harder to imagine the word peace resonating in any real way. There's so much unrest in our world right now. There's so much environmental conflict, political conflict. Um, people are out of their jobs. We know that so many people around the world are suffering. And it's just, it's really hard to imagine the, the word peace having any meaning right now. We're all waiting for things to get better. This COVID-19 pandemic has been going on for almost an entire year, and we're all looking to the future, just waiting and waiting for, for things to go back to normal, for things to get better, and really there's no end in sight. In that regard, we have a lot in common with the Jewish people of Jesus' day around the time that he was born. When Jesus was born, uh, the Jewish people were living under uh, the Roman Empire, and they had been waiting for a Messiah to come and rescue them from their oppressors for centuries. In their mind, this Messiah was a warrior or a powerful king who would overthrow the Roman Empire and restore um, Israel to all of its glory. So it's a big surprise when we get to Luke's gospel and the hero of our story is a baby. And his first visitors are not priests or kings, they're just lowly shepherds. They don't even have names. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14 says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. This will be a sign. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. I have to admit, if someone came up to me today and said that all of the world's problems would go away, but they're the responsibility of a baby, I would also be a little bit skeptical. But when you zoom out on the story of Jesus' birth and you look at the big picture of his life on earth, his mission and, and his life, I think you can understand why God chose this plan. So I want to pause here for a second and talk about something that I saw on social media a couple of weeks ago. Um, you may be familiar with the last name Kardashian, and if you're not, congratulations, I'm jealous. But the Kardashians are the definition of people who are famous for being famous. And they caused quite an uproar on social media recently when Kim Kardashian flew all of her friends and family to a tropical island to celebrate her 40th birthday. And then a few days later, her younger sister Kendall threw a secret star-studded birthday party right around Halloween. She was celebrating her 25th birthday. There was a lot of backlash and public outcry about these two celebrations, not because people don't want the Kardashians to be happy or to celebrate awesome things happening in their lives, but because this behavior, it displays a significant lack of empathy and sensitivity to the suffering of so many people in our world right now. It would appear the Kardashians can't really relate to what so many of us are going through right now, what we're feeling and what we're experiencing. And when they say that they do, we don't believe them because the kinds of lives that they're leaving, leading, we just don't relate to. I want to compare what I've just said about the Kardashians to something that happened to a friend of mine last week. My very best friend in the whole wide world, uh, she was called into a meeting by HR out of the blue, and within six, month, six minutes, she was let go from her job. Um, like I said, it lasted less than six minutes, and in that time, her life went from stable and secure to uncertain and, quite frankly, really, really scary. She was shocked and hurt and stunned. 
She cried when she told me the news because she really hadn't seen it coming. The next day, I texted her to check in and to see how she was doing, and and she told me that she had just talked to an older woman friend of hers and, and shared with her what was going on in her life. And this woman really comforted her. She shared her own story of something similar that had happened to her, and at the end of the conversation, my friend said that she felt strangely at peace. I don't think anything about that older woman's story was particularly exceptional. Absolutely no one wants to get fired. No one ever wants to tell anyone else the story of how they got fired. It's a really stressful and often humiliating experience. But I think that what helped my friend was seeing someone who had gone through a really difficult situation come out on the other side, thriving and actually saying that the experience made her a better and stronger person and opened up a whole new world of opportunity for her. That's what brought my friend peace. Compare my friend's story with what I said about the Kardashians. I'm not saying the Kardashians are bad people, but what I am saying is I don't think their their lives are particularly relatable to us. Not even on a good day, but particularly right now in the midst of a global pandemic. It's a difference that we have a hard time wrapping our heads around. Instead of bringing us comfort when we see the Kardashians living it up and living their best lives, it can actually be pretty painful for a lot of us. When I was little, I was really obsessed with Greek mythology. Artemis, Zeus, Athena, the god of war, the god of the sun, Poseidon, the god of the sea— They were all very dramatic characters living larger-than-life lives. Um, They had outrageous stories. You know, it was really the stuff of myths are made of. Um, But the one thing that was common in all of their stories was that all of their stories, all of their lives focused on one thing, and that was the pursuit of their own happiness. I want to compare that image of the Greek gods with the image we see of Jesus in Luke's gospel, a tiny newborn baby born without any fanfare in a manger outside Bethlehem. To our knowledge, Jesus lived the first 30 years of his life almost exactly the same way that he was born. Nothing really noticeable or remarkable about him. Nothing was really recorded that was outstanding. He just lived quietly without attracting any attention. An ordinary Jewish boy growing up in an ordinary, loving Jewish family. He was fully God And he lived among us in order to experience everything that we experience as human beings. He wasn't like the Greek gods living on Mount Olympus who really couldn't care less about humanity. They didn't even want to give us fire if you read all the myths. They they really, we were playthings to them. Rather, he was in the thick of it with humanity, experiencing everything we experience. Love, loss, grief, anger, disappointment. We know from reading about his last few years of earth in the Gospels that Jesus was heartbroken when his friend Lazarus died, and he got really frustrated with his friends and his parents when they didn't understand what he was trying to tell them. He lost his temper in the temple of Jerusalem, and he celebrated with friends at a wedding, and he showed compassion for countless people who were suffering. The only emotions that the Bible doesn't record Jesus feeling are worry, anxiety, and fear. And I think that's because he could trust in God the Father and his plan. We get a picture of that unwavering faith every time Jesus stopped to pray, most especially in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night that he was arrested, right before he was crucified. Jesus knew what was coming. Jesus knew that he was going to die for all of humanity. But if you look at those passages, you will see that he just knelt down and prayed to God and expressed that it was God's will and he trusted God's will. Our second reading this week is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. This is a letter that Paul wrote from prison to the church in Philippi. If he was in prison, he was definitely suffering. But what strikes me about this letter is that it's really easy to forget that he's writing it from prison because it's such a joyful letter. He just seems so happy. He's writing encouragement to his friends in Philippi, and by extension to us. He writes, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, 
which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I think it's important to remind ourselves that neither Jesus nor Paul said that being a Christian would be easy. Living the Christian life is not going to free us from pain and suffering. And in fact, in many cases, following Jesus actually will make our lives harder. But both Jesus and Paul recommend the same solution to fear and anxiety and worry. And that's prayer. Turn to God in prayer because He's listening. Turn to God in prayer because He loves you. Turn to God in prayer because he understands the pain that you're experiencing. Unlike the Greek gods, unlike the Kardashians, Jesus understands your pain and suffering. Jesus knows what it's like to grieve, and he knows what it's like to be persecuted for your identity. He knows what it's like to live in a world that feels chaotic and beyond your control. He knows what it's like to live a life and not know what's going to happen tomorrow. Earlier in Philippians, Paul writes, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature a God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on a cross. I just find it so incredible and comforting to know that the creator of the universe humbled himself and made himself a human being so that he could relate to us on every level. I find so much comfort in knowing that when I turn to God with my fearful, pleading prayers, he not only hears them and cares about what I have to say, but he gets it. He understands what I'm talking about. And even more than that, I know he will use that pain and fear and suffering for his good work. I may not be able to comprehend how he's going to do that in the moment, but I know that God knows what he's doing. And I just have to lean on him for my peace. And I'm not saying that God made the pandemic happen or God is making whatever suffering in your life happen. But what I am saying is that you can trust that God takes everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and he uses it for his purposes. We just don't always understand how or why. I want to leave you with a quote that I read in my study Bible while I was preparing this message. It's from Dorothy Sayer, and she wrote Christian Letters to a Post-Christian World, and she writes, Whatever game God is playing with his creation, he has kept his own rules and played fair. He can exact nothing from man that he has not exacted from himself. He has himself gone through the whole of human experience, from the trivial irritations of family life and the cramping restriction of hard work and lack of money, to the worst horrors of pain and humiliation, defeat, despair, and death. When he was a man, he played the man. He was born in poverty and died in disgrace and thought it all worthwhile. But why was it worthwhile? Jesus living as a human and dying on a cross was worthwhile because it was what it took to bring us closer to God. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It was all worthwhile because Jesus believes we are worthwhile. And I think that takes us full circle back to the very end of today's passage from Luke chapter 2, the very first proclamation by the heavenly host to the shepherds after Jesus' birth. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy to all the people. Today in the town of, of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, 
peace to those on whom his favor rests. The good news for us is that his favor rests on all of us by believing that Jesus came to earth, lived as a human, experienced everything that we have experienced, all the pain, all the joy, all the suffering, all the celebrations, the whole host of human experience, and then died on the cross for our sins so that we can be close to God, that is incredibly good news. And that is why we are here today. That is why we are so excited about Christmas, because that's the beginning of this amazing story. So while this Christmas season may not feel particularly peaceful, maybe more so than in other years, I hope that you do lean on Jesus, lean on the hope that you have in Him. Get on your knees and pray. That's what Jesus did. That's what His his apostles have done and told us to do. And that is where we will find peace, is by trusting that God knows what He's doing, and more importantly, that God knows how we feel, and that He loves us, and that our suffering is important to Him, um, and that He will never leave us alone. Let us pray. Loving God, as we prepare our hearts for this Christmas season, um, please give us peace. And, and for those times when we do not feel at peace, please remind us that we can lean on you for that peace that we're missing in our lives. Please help us to remember that you are always there, that you are our companion, our one true hope, and that you will never abandon us or leave us, um, and that you are more than just a story that we read about around Christmas, that you are our, our, our living hope and the very reason for our existence is to love and be in relationship with you. Please bless all of us, especially those of us who are going through a particularly difficult time. Please bring us peace. Please bring us comfort. Please help us to lean on each other and be Christ to one another in your world. And please help us remember that you are the reason for this season, that you are the reason that we hope, the reason that we light the candles, the reason that we sing the jubilant hymns, the reason that we celebrate, the reason that we generously give to others. You are the reason for this season. You are the reason that we have peace and hope and love and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. You heard the cry of our hearts And you came down Freely you gave us your love Showing us how Make me an instrument of your peace Where there is hatred, let me sow love Where there is darkness, let me shine light And may your love cause us to open up Cause us to open
your love is strength in our weakness your love is Oh God, we, we thank you that you have, you have heard the cries of, of our hearts and, and you have chosen it to come. You have um, come in, in a way that brings healing and hope to this broken world. You bring peace, the peace that we've talked about today, the, the peace that you, you continue to give to us, each of us, every, every day, every day. And so we pray, come, Holy Spirit, come as we go from here out into this week and this world and this Christmas season. We pray for your spirit to guide us, to, to be with us as we enter into a, a Christmas season that will be so very different. And so surprise us, bring your new life, that deep peace again that we've, we've talked about today as we, as we move out, as we go from here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And here's Matt to talk about our next podcast. Hey everyone, Matt here. We're all really excited about the Advent series of the Good News Podcast, and we hope that you are too. This podcast is different from the Reimagined series because we're trying to connect the Advent themes of love, joy, hope, and peace to all aspects of our community. To do this, we're bringing in community members from all over Brampton and beyond. So check it out every Sunday to see how each week's message is lived out in our community. Thanks, Matt. And we encourage you to check out our podcast that's going to drop at the end of the service today, where Jamie is having a conversation with Nick Larder, who is the director of Scott's Funeral Home. He and Jamie are talking about peace in the midst of grief. And later tonight, Reminder, at 6.55, tune in to YouTube Baking with Jamie on our first Sunday Night Live. Should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it will be at yeah, least it'll that. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> and uh, also enjoy your Zoom church now. Um, pray, pray that the going deeper questions will be a blessing to you. And mm. those connections are so important. If you want to know how to get into Zoom church, check out our website. And uh, there's a way to register uh, from there. I want to say thanks for joining us. Thanks to our worship team for leading us. Thanks to Ali for a, a really powerful message today. And just as we go, let's, uh, let's seek God's blessing, receive God's blessing as we go. May God, the one who has given us life, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, and the Holy Spirit, our friend and our guide, lead us as we go from here. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a great week. <laughs>